Hello everyone, this is Rashida. Welcome to my channel. Today's video is going to be on precision recall and airborne score. This is a very popular and commonly used evaluation metric for machine learning models, to be specific, classification models. In my last two videos, we built two classification models. We used only accuracy score as the evaluation metric. Look here. If you remember, we got 87% accuracy score and we said the model is really good. But is the accuracy score alone a good enough evaluation metric for a classification problem? Actually, no. Let's look at an example. Say we have 10,000 people and we are testing them for cancer, if they have cancer or not. And 99% people are tested negative and only 1% tested positive. Now, we developed a machine learning models with an accuracy of 90%. 90% sounds really high, isn't it? But just have a look at this data. 99% people tested negative. So, even if we do not develop any machine learning model and just say that 100% people tested negative, still we will be 99% accurate. In that case, this machine learning model is not doing any good job, isn't it? So, look, out of 10,000 people, 1% positive, that means 100 people are tested positive for cancer. Even if you do not detect a single person who has cancer, still you can get a very high accuracy score, isn't it? So when we have this kind of skewed data, accuracy score alone is not good. So the model is not useful at all, even if it has 90% accuracy score. To evaluate machine learning models more efficiently, the output can be mapped into some more fine-tuned categories. Look at this. True positives, true negatives, false positives, and false negatives. Think about our cancer test example. If the actual test result is positive and our machine learning model predicts this as positive, then it's true positive. If the actual test result is negative and our machine learning models also predicts negative, in that case, it's true negative. If actual test result is negative and machine learning models falsely predicts as positive, in that case, it's false positive. And at the end, if actual test result is positive and machine learning model falsely predicts this as negative, it is false negative. We can put them in a matrix form like this, where this side is predicted values, this side is actual values. You can see in here is zero and actual value is also zero. In that case, it's true negative. Predicted value is zero, actual value is zero. Both are negative, so it's true negatives. Here, predicted value is 1, that means positive, and actual value is 0, that means negative, so it's false positive. And you can see here, predicted value is 0, that means negative, and actual value is 1, it's false negative. And here, predicted value is 1, and actual value is 1, both are positive, so it's true positive. So this matrix is called as confusion matrix. And in scikit-learn library, we have a method called confusion matrix. You can use that and you will get all these four values easily. Let's go back to the model again. I have the link of the video where we build this model in the description box below. Please feel free to check. Just as a refresher, what we were doing in this model, we used this hard.csv data and we used all these variables and predicted if a person has a heart disease or no. Okay, so this is the column that says if a person has a heart disease or no, yes or no value. And look, we split the data set using train test split method, and we used X train and Y train to train the model, and we had this X test and Y test separated to evaluate the model. Look here, we used X test and Y test to find the accuracy score and we got 87% accuracy score and we said the accuracy score was pretty good. Here we have our predicted labels using the predict function and x test scaled. I hope you remember we scaled our x test and x train both. This is our predicted label and we have our original label y test like this. And we can use both of them and create confusion matrix simply using the confusion matrix function from scikit-learn library. From sklearn.matrix import 
confusion matrix. Okay, now let's just use this function. We have to pass y test and y print. That means our original label and the predicted label. Here is our confusion matrix. Okay, you can see 45, 1, 11, 33. So here we put all this value in the confusion matrix in its matrix form. 45, 1, 11, and 33. We can use these four values to further advance our model evaluation. Let's see. Precision. Look, the precision is true positive over true positive plus false positive. Look, these false positives are actually not positives. They're negatives. But our machine learning model predicted them as false positives. So true positive plus false positives. These are all the positives that our machine learning model will predict. Right? So the precision is the percentage of positives out of all the predicted positives. For a perfect model, precision should be 1. Look, we do not want any false positives, right? If false positive is 0, in that case, it's going to be true positive over true positive. So it's going to be 1. Here is the precision for our heart disease prediction model. So it's 0 0.97. Look, true positive was 33 and false positive was 1 only. So the precision is 0 0.97. Because we had only one false positive value, so we got a really high and really good precision. Recall. Look, recall is true positive over true positive plus false negatives. Look, these false negatives are actually not negatives. These are actually positives, right? But our machine learning model predicted falsely as negatives. So the recall is the percentage of correct positive predictions by the model out of all the actual positives. Ideally, recall also should be one for a perfect model because look at it, we do not want any false negatives, right? So if false negative is zero, so it's going to be again true positive over true positive. So recall should be one. For our heart disease prediction model, we have false negative of 11, so we have recall of 0 0.75. So this is not bad. The value is not as good as the precision, the 0 0.97, but 0 0.75 is also not bad. Because for the perfect model, recall should be 1, and for the worst model, recall should be 0. So from 0 to 1, it's, if it's above 0 0.5, it's acceptable, it totally depends on what your expectation, how much false negative you actually will allow for your model. Recall is also known as sensitivity. Now, F1 score. Look at the F1 score formula. It's 2 times precision times recall over precision plus recall. If precision is 0 or recall is 0, F1 score is 0. So, for F1 score to be high, both precision and recall has to be high. F1 score is the harmonic mean of both precision and recall. For the perfect model, F1 score should be 1 as well. Look, if both precision is 1 and recall is 1, so on top is going to be 2 times 1 times 1, 1. And at the bottom, precision is 1 plus recall is 1, 2. So 2 over 2 is, has to be 1. For our heart disease prediction model, our F1 score came out to be 0.85. I used the precision and recall and we just calculated. That's all I wanted to share today. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please like, comment, share and subscribe.